Hi, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be looking at finding the area of kites. Okay? One of the great things about kites is since the top to tail diagonal bisects the angles at the top and the tail and bisects the side to side diagonal, and then I have congruent angles here and here, not bisected, but congruent, I really do have two congruent triangles. The top, or the one side, I guess we should call it, of the kite is exactly the same as the other side of the kite. So to find the area, if I can find the area of one triangle, all I have to do then is double it. So it's going to be two times this one side, which is a triangle. Okay, so let's find the area of the top triangle. The area for the top triangle is going to be one half its base times its height. So let's look at how long that base is. It's going to be the 13 and the 52 together. So I'm going to do 13 plus 52. That base is 65. The height, what's nice is the height can be found using half of this other diagonal because I know in a kite those diagonals intersect at a 90 degree angle. If the whole side to side diagonal is 64, I know the top to tail diagonal divides that in half, so this is 32. So my area is 1 half of 65 times 32, 1 half times 65 times 32 is 1,040. Okay, so the area of just the top part is 1,040 and it's inches squared because it's area. My total area then is going to be 1,040 for the top and 1,040 for the bottom. So it's 2 times that 1,040 square inches. So that is going to have an area of 2,080 square inches. Okay, let's look at my second example. On my second example, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at just the top triangle and then I know I'm going to double it and that's going to give me my whole area. Okay, So just the top triangle is going to be area equals one half the base times the height. My base all the way across the bottom here of this triangle is one of my diagonals. It's my top to tail diagonal, 20. And then the other one is going to be half of my side to side diagonal which is going to be Eight. So the area for this one is one half of 20 times 8. One half of 20 is 10. 10 times 8 is 80. And I don't know what the units are here, so I'm just going to say units squared. Remember, don't ever put that square on the 80. It goes on the units. So then my total area, I have 80 for the top and 80 for the bottom. So it's going to be 2 times the triangle. So my area is going to be 2 times the 80 units. So my area is going to be 160 square units. Again, that square cannot go on the 160. It has to go on the units. Okay? All right. When I look at the next one, here we go, I am going to have to draw in that triangle, right? Because I don't see it there, right? I need to draw in the top triangle so I can see it there. And I'm also going to draw in its height because I know the area is going to be two triangles. So I need to figure out how big one of those triangles is. So the triangle equals one half its base times its height. So that's going to be the base is my top to tail diagonal, which is 38. And the 
height is half of the tail, the side to side diagonal, so half of 19 is going to be 9.5. It's okay to have decimals. So 1 half times 38 times 9.5, 19 times 9.5 is 180.5. I'm going to do that one more time just to make sure I didn't get any buttons pushed wrong. One half of 38 times 9.5. 180.5 is the area for the top triangle. So then my total area is going to be two of those triangles. What are these? They don't have any units, so it's just square units. So my total area then, when I multiply 180.5 times 2, it's going to be one, sorry, 361 square units. Okay, so a nice simple way using triangles to find the area of a kite. Okay, there is, if you look at a formula chart, a formula for the area of a kite. My formula for the area of a kite is the same as the formula for the area of a rhombus. One half diagonal one times diagonal two. And let's think about why that is. Each time when I came up here, I had to do half of this diagonal to be my height, right? So I already did half a half a diagonal so it's like one-fourth, right? Half of a half is one-fourth. And then I multiplied that by two. So I doubled my one-fourth, so I was right back at my half and then my two diagonals. So it kind of is interesting how that kind of works together and it just kind of shortens it so you don't have to do it in two separate steps. So that's really all the formula is doing it. Doing is it's shortening it so you don't have to do it in two separate steps. One-half diagonal one times diagonal 2. So let's see if we can use that formula for these problems. Okay, so the first one, area equals 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. So diagonal 1, it doesn't matter which one, just like with my rhombus, it doesn't matter which one we call diagonal 1 or diagonal 2. If this is my diagonal 1, then it is 2 plus 10, it's 12. Diagonal 2 is 6 plus 6, it's also 12. 12 times 12 is 144, which would be 72. Or half of 12 is 6, and 6 times 12 is 72. You can need it either way. I don't have any units here, but I can't put the square on the 2, so I have to write units squared. I could just put a U if I'd like. Okay, let's do one more and we'll leave the last two for the next video. Okay, all right, so when I look at this one, my area equals one half diagonal one times diagonal two. I'm just going to use this one as diagonal one because it doesn't really matter which one's one and which one's two. So on this one, I have to go 12 and then I have to go another eight, so that's a total of 20. Hold on, we're getting an announcement. Teachers, please excuse this interruption. Would you please check your email? Please check your email. Thank you. I will be finishing this problem and checking my email. All right, so then I want to find this diagonal here. For this diagonal, I know if I can find one, of the, one piece of it, the other piece is going to match. So what I'm going to do to find the one piece is I'm going to use the idea that I have right triangles that make up my height where I know my hypotenuse is 12 or thir 13. One of my legs is 12 and I'm looking for the other leg. So to find this other leg, since it's a leg in my square root, I'm going to subtract 13 and 12, the bigger number goes in first. So that's gonna be 13 squared is 169, 144, that's gonna be 25, so that is it comes out to a nice whole number. I love it. So those are both 5, so this is 5 plus
plus another 5, that diagonal is 10. My total area then is 1 half of 20 times 10. Half of 20 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Or I could do 20 times 10 and get 200. Half of that is 100. Or even half of 10 is 5, and 5 times 20 is also 100. doesn't matter the order you multiply those in. So here I'm going to have my area is 100, and I don't have any units written there, so I can just do a unit squared, or I can write out the word unit squared. But whatever you do, don't put the square right on the 100. It has to go on the word units or the U. All right, we will come back and figure out what the area of this company logo is, and then given an area, we're going to see if we can find a missing value. All right, um, come on back, and we'll figure out these last two problems. Thanks for watching.